Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to East Providence, Rhode Island. We're here at East Providence Lanes for the finals of the East Coast Sports Investor NEBA Trios. First time we've run trios in quite a while here in NEBA. This is NEBA number 961. We're on a short Broadway pattern. We are going to be covering the eight teams that made the finals. So we're going to, unlike starting with the round of 16 like we normally do, we'll start with the round of eight. Then we'll have the round of four and round of two. So just three rounds of uh, coverage on the live stream today. However, they are trios. So we'll be, we will be with you for quite a while. Um, good to see everyone already. It's a winter afternoon here in New England. Bruce Hall here with you and my broadcast partner, the gas man, Brian Gaskell. How you doing? Hi, Brian. Bruce. How you doing? Good to see you. And I'll take this winter day over yesterday's winter day, by the way. You think? <laughs> I was trying to fly in that winter day, my friend, to try to get here. And then our title sponsor joining us and going to give us some good odds on this stuff is Jeff Dawson. How you doing, Jeff? Doing great, Bruce. How are you? And thanks for coming on. Welcome. And thank you so much for sponsoring. Uh, this is a, a great turnout here. What? Look at these teams. Um, 46 teams. Sorry, 49, 49 teams yeah. we had of trios. So almost 150 guys. 147 guys came out to bowl. So that's fantastic. And uh, you're looking at the top eight teams. The cut was plus 315. We only bowled four games, so it was plus 315 for 12 games. It would have been that. And then we went straight into the finals with no re-oil. So here we are, and we are our feature pair is 5, 6, and 7, and 8. There is a team. There are teams bowling on 3 and 4, and there's another match on 11 and 12. That's the entirety of the finals here. And Mr. Gaskill has it all written down. He's got the bracket filled in. Maybe you can run down our teams. Brian. Sure. Thank you. On lanes three and four, we have the trio of Tommy Kuhlman, Danny Koo, and Todd Lathrop. They're high, They were right? the number one seed. They yep. shot uh, 503 over, Stunning. including uh, 802 the last game. Whoa. <laughs> <coughs> Hello. And so they will be bowling the eighth seed, which is Nick Perone, Jason Kornog, and Thomas Coco. Uh, on five and six, we have the team of Joe Zagari, Randy Hagemoser, and John Van Hees. There's a strike FX team for you. That's one of two and in the finals. They will be bowling the number five seed, which is Jay Johnson, RJ Broge, and Bill Webb. Okay. And uh, over to... That's on five and actually, six? Actually, no. I'm sorry. That's, I was going down the bracket. That, yeah. That's seven and eight. My, my apologies. So um, back to five and six. <coughs> Steven Major, Kevin Tebow, Alex Aguiar, another team, Strike FX. Strike FX team, yep. They were the um, number two seed, and they they actually had an 819 in game three. <laughs> so they shot uh, 488 over. Shake it off. They will be bowling the team of Jamie Silva Jr., Mike Colby, and Ditto Fitzpatrick. Okay, that's five and five six. Five and six, right. Yeah. And we did all seven right. and eight, and then skip over all the way to 11 and 12. You're not going to be able to see on camera. Maybe the pins at best, but um, the number three seed, Brandon Robertson, Tim Elsis, and Frankie Kalka. Mm hmm and they will be bowling the 6 seed, which is Peter Fox, Dennis Bissonette, and Chris Monroy. So, there's your layout. We have 24 bowlers in the finals, even though there's only eight teams, trios. Uh, Jeff, what are you thinking? Any, uh, any, any early odds? The number one seed, I would have to be a slight favorite. Um, they get a so you like the Coomlin, Danny Koo, Todd Lathrop team? Exactly, okay. and then I would go second favorite with uh, Alex's team. Alex, yep, okay. And that, that's the number one and number two qualifiers. They did lap the field. We'll see how they do. Now, a thing I would look for is, you know, who did well the last game? Because we are in the burn where there's no re-oil. And there are, you know, three bowlers. Uh, even though it was only four games, it is three guys on a team. So we had, you know, essentially six games per pair every game so we've already had 24 games bowled if you think about it on these pairs right so there was a little more shim than i thought i we would see there brian what did you yeah. see out there no oh, absolutely yeah and, and i mean there was a lot of your example i never saw so many purple hammers in my life purple hammers <laughs> everywhere I, like i looked at one rack there was seven of them on the same rack and i'm like there's only six guys bowling yeah. <laughs> but um well you can never have too many I, as apparently it out. Well, uh, let me, I will say this about what you just said about the, uh, you know, who's bowling well at the end of the day. The Van Hees team, they finished on 7-8. By luck of the draw, they got the same pair that they fit, they just finished and on what like did 20 they shoot? minutes ago. And, and they what did they shoot? 7-0-4. Okay. That's so, a good score. Um, I just happened, we were setting up and I, you know, 
uh, and I know they finish right where they are right now. So um, there you go. Maybe slight edge to them in the first round, but we'll see. That I mean, obviously they're bowling a tough team. So well, I can tell you this: having crossed the higher part of the house, having coming down to this section of the house, hooked at least three boards more, and that's on the left. And on the right, it was probably an entire zone more. Did you yeah. come across here? I mean, it well, was we crazy. started down here, so I got hooked. 18 minutes to figure it out. Yeah, we, you know, in the first game. But then when you moved, it must have been much tighter. It, right? A little bit, yeah, a yeah. little bit, yeah. definitely. Um, I did start with my old faithful urethane, which always works in this pattern, and yeah. it was like just hooked. not quite enough. Right no, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough unless I like oh, okay. forced it to be enough. Oh, okay. So I actually had to go to reactive the last two games. Um, Interesting. But to your so point, as you we moved, were moving. Yeah, I was going to say, as you moved out of this Towards zone, the high end, they got yeah. tighter, and I had to go to, I, I did yeah. have to go to reactive, which I normally never have to do on this pattern, but it um, well, just wasn't as much bounce as I thought there would be. Right. It was still there. I mean, it played like Broadway. It just wasn't as... Well, I thought there was more hold. I, 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 I don't know if it's house memory or something, but I thought... I thought the scores were higher than I expected them for Broadway. You know, normally there's really not a lot of forgiveness if you get the ball in, and if you try to play anything inside of five, it just hooks early. Right. I saw guys play in the track and getting hold there, so I wonder yeah. if we didn't have a little bit of house memory uh, and that made the breakdown a little better for some guys the way they play it. Like, for example, the, the shot Stephen Major just shot. Uh, normally on Broadway, you can't, you can't do that. You can't play 12 and spin it and watch it lay down the... Uh, you know, you know, go down the, the oil line. So, so this is three games total pins. So we'll be uh, doing a lot of math for you here, trying to add up where the various teams are as we go through. Right, Gas? That's he's, what I'm here for. He's Mr. Math Man. So we'll be trying to uh, uh, keep up with so just who's ahead and who's behind in yeah, the different matches. It's one game match, but three the three scores. One game match, but right. three. I didn't want combined. people to think right. it was like a three game total would thing because then we right. re really would be here all day. Yeah, nine <laughs> games per. <laughs> round of the finals so it's like we won't be having dinner tonight so no it should go relatively fast and uh, you know as i said the scores are pretty high uh there seems to be enough soup that the guys can move in and get it down the lane uh, and uh, we'll go from there so and in fact the uh, van hees team uh is uh perfect so far right yeah they this got, is the they got uh, three doubles yeah three doubles so We'll be zooming in on the score. In fact, let me do that for you now. Let me show you that. And there's the score for uh, there's a score for the uh, match on seven and eight. The Lathrop team has three doubles on uh, three and four Lathrop also. Lathrop on three and four, so mm -hmm. another good another good start for that team. So. Jeff, how's uh, how are things going? How was the Super Bowl for you? Was it the Super Bowl? We had a future on the Rams plus two fifteen, uh, hoping the Kansas City got there because we had them plus four hundred. Oh, really? Um, okay. Hit a couple props. Um, overall, was okay. We were real top heavy uh, with the Niners early preseason. Oh, really? Um, Interesting. NFC and Super Bowl, so we got a good run from them and just yeah. came up oh, short. Yeah. Just a little short, yeah. Yeah, I had a friend who bet the, the Rams straight on the money line, and he was sweating it out. He might have. Nope. We, the Mevo tells me we had a break in the stream, everybody. Hopefully you're back with us. Um, and uh, Yeah, it looked like it was just for a second. Yeah. It looked like just for a second. Because I'm watching there, it on right? my iPad. It, 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 yeah. it did go off for a second. Yeah. Well, which is weird because we're hardwired in, but... Yeah. Dennis Bissonnette Sr. weighing in, asking about his son, Dennis Jr., and he is over on 11 and 12. And let me see if I can get a weigh in on what's going on with that team. They're bowling the, the Calca team that qualified third. Uh, they've got one guy's got a triple, another guy's got a even through three, and then there's a strike open strike on the other on the other pair. So. Um, so that match pretty even so far, uh, I would say, with the Dennis Bissonnette match. And there's Kevin Tebow, front three for the Strike FX team on five and six. And here is Van Hees to keep this team perfect. How about front nine for the Van Hees Strike FX team? 
Here we go. I needed a line on that match. We need a line on that one, huh? With DraftKings, one Rhode Island. We need a line here. I'll say, you know. <laughs> what's the over under in their final score, Jeff? What do you think? Ooh, uh, two, six, six, seven, eighty. Here's Bill Webb. Seven, I'm going to go 769. 769. <laughs> That's very specific. <laughs> Let's write that down. I'll take under. I don't care. Okay. They might go over like God bless them, but I'll there take. That's a huge number. So you're so actually, it's already the round of eight, guys. So it's not too soon to pick our winner. So you've you, right. you've liked the Kumlin. You like the the high seed, basically, Jeff. Uh, Kumlin. Yeah, I, I would Lathrop. take the plus money on Alex's team because I could. Guys, don't overthink this. Don't overthink. This. Don't overthink. This. We're in East Providence. Just take Alex. <laughs> just take Alex. <laughs> just just take Alex. Well, what the, do you mean? You got Van right I, I, here. But yeah, but I just said I, this round because I knew they just bowled here. I'm. Uh, <laughs> Just, just take Alex. I and think be done the with best it. local meme I may have ever seen in this region is if East Providence Lane didn't exist, neither would Alex Aguiar. <laughs> Which isn't true, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. And how about the Van He's team? Perfect through 10. The first 10 shots. And as soon as I. As 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 there's the, 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 the <laughs> announcer's <laughs> curse on 5 and 6. I'm so Alex, bad at this job. <laughs> Alex goes through the beak for a 4 6 7. No, you're actually really good at it because when you get to be good, that's when the announcer's curse kicks in. When you start to make those uh, those predictions and kill everybody. So there's Jay Johnson with a big strike. To get a double to have any help in this match, these guys need to start striking like crazy. And here's Hagemoser now. Ditto Fitzpatrick. There's a nice eight pin for Ditto. And those guys don't. And Ditto missed a single pin in the first frame. That's their only open, but Alex is going to give them back. But they have a triple on the side of the Alex Ekiar team, so they're going to be ahead. And there's Randy Hagemoser breaking up the, the, the Team 300 with a deep shot for the 247. And Alex goes eight out. That was three two fifty nines, by the way. Oh, how are you trying to do three fifty? Look okay. at this math. I heard you doing the math. Doing I was the trying multiplying. Two fifty nine, two fifty nine, two fifty nine. Very nice. That got me and right into that RJ ballpark. R.J. Broge trying to keep things alive here, and R.J. Broge working on a Dutch deuce. You know, I saw a lot of those people struggled on one lane, um, while everybody else shooting the lights out. You go strike spare, strike spare, strike spare. It drives you crazy because you can't figure out one lane. I did see a lot of cliffing. I saw people move in, and they would have oh, underreaction. Mm -hmm. If you saw that, yes. Oh yeah. But yeah, you saw people go oh, and uh, there's geez, a nasty, that pen moved there's and a nasty fall. chop by uh, by Hagemoser. Chops the two and moves the four, but doesn't take it out. Here's Mike Colby. He of the over the fronts, and unfortunately, goes four six seven. So as soon as we start calling out some of these guys' shots, gas, they're they're falling apart here. They don't call me the Black Cloud for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a beautiful shot by Bill Webb, who's got the front three. He's the beacon of hope for this team. And here's Van Hees trying to match Webb's front four. First time I ever went to Vegas for the high roller in 91 or 92. Might have been the year Vialli made the show. Got off the plane, it was raining. In the Vegas. first time I ever set foot in the city of that's Las Vegas, impressive. it was raining. That's impressive. That's <laughs> <laughs> all they call me Black Cloud ever since. And he goes right. Followed me all the way from Boston. And he gets a little bit too much reaction, goes through the beak, and leaves the 4-7. So this match is actually tightening up. And on a dare, they're 40 over, maybe 30, 40, 50, 60. So probably within about 20 pins now, this match on 7 and 8. And Alex firmly in control of his match. So, what's the br what's the bracket breakdown? Could we have an all strike FX final by any chance? Yep, we could. They are on opposite sides. They're of the on bracket. opposite sides of the yep. bracket. So, you could see Stephen Major has had a, s a smoking hot hand. He's won like the next the last ten axes in a row or something like that. Am I am exaggerating? But he's just dominating everything he bowls. Um, you haven't seen him bowl in my league. <laughs> I have. He's on my team. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. Because he's with the Black Cloud. That, that's why he can't. That's why he's not doing well in late. So, so you talk. Most of these tournaments, there is oil after the cut. 
uh, they re-oil. It's multi squad. Two squads. Yeah. We re-oil. What we did this year is we voted to not re-oil if it's a single squad tournament because everybody bowls in the same thing. That's everybody's on the same burn. Okay. So we used to even now we would re-oil even even on a single squad tournament, but we voted that out in the annual meeting okay. just to move the tournament along. So short pattern. You said burn now. Anyone here? I mean, as these are going to continue to break down. Mm -hmm the thought process by these guys? I mean, are they going to have to be adjusting on the fly, going to new different balls? or is No doubt about it. I think what most guys you're seeing is they're moving in and balling up. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll move in, so they get away from the urethane. You know, the urethane works great if you can pipe the edge or pipe, you know, five, six, seven, something like that. But as you move in and try to turn the corner, your urethane is not strong enough on the back part of the lane. The urethane, as Gas will tell you, is great for hook stop. You know, it hooks early in the lane and then just sets up, which is his favorite shot. You know, and, and Gas makes a, Gas made a living doing that. So, but when that goes away, when the heads start to go too early, you've got to move in and catch some more head oil, get the ball to skid down the lane further, but you're throwing it to the right. You need more powerful equipment to get it back from there. So, so that's what most guys are doing. That's what my, my guys did. Um, you know, I crossed with Adam Zimmerman and Tommy Tkaz, and both of them ended up, started with purples, and they ended up deep with a phase two and a, a something else strong uh, by the time they were done. Zed, they, by the time they were done. So, and uh, uh, we, we, we made a run at it. We, didn't, you know, we weren't competitive enough to make it, but that's, that's how the typical breakdown is. Even on the left, you know, RJ, you know, look at how deep RJ is going to be. He likes to be deep, but he, he can play out too. So he's way in around 12, 13. But I think he's staying with your thing, though. RJ is there. So, so after that, perfect start. We've had two opens by the Van Hees Strike FX team and we've had doubles and triples coming in from the Bill Webb team so I'm going to ask our staff mathematician to tell us where that match stands on 7 and 8 because it's awfully close right now. I would say the Webb team is actually ahead now. Webb team might have taken the lead on 7 and 8. Boop. That's why I wanted to put you on the spot. Now Randy yeah, Hagemoser they've, they've gone ahead. Hook. Yeah. Randy Hagemoser gets hooked. I've bowled in this pair. I mean, they've only missed three times themselves, and they have no opens. So right, right. The other team's missed now four times, and they That's got right. two opens. So That's right here they come. So we've had a lead oh, change. Oh, these matches is it, 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 it can change really fast. We had a lead no. change on seven and eight, but unfortunately, the uh, uh, the team on five and six facing the Alex Aguiar team is not having any such luck. They've had two opens in the fourth. Uh, and then Kevin Tebow is perfect through four. And Alex has doubled with a single open, and the other guy's doubled. So uh, Alex firmly in control. Should we uh, talk real quick six. about the um, the way the teams were formed eligibility-wise as far as the champion rules? and Because yeah, really like people so might so be interested because yeah, like yeah. Jay Johnson and Webb and Broge have all won before, but yeah. they, they're still able to bowl together because uh, we relaxed the rules as far as how many years since yeah. your last win. and. Yeah, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so um, each team was allowed to have one person that has won multiple titles. Um, and then you could have one person that has won once and one person that has won never. That was the basic. But the rules were relaxed. If you haven't won in 10 years, you became a non-champion again, basically. If, um, you're, if you're under 60. If you're under 60, if you're under over 60, it was five years, correct? Right. That's right. So you had to have at least one non-champion. Right. And you could have only one single-time, or you could have two single-time champions. Right. You could have only one multi-champ. So you had to have a non-champ. You could only have one multi-champ. So most teams were one multi-champ, one single-champ, and one non-champ. Right. What but most in the case of Webb and Broge, they've both won multiple times, I'm guessing... Somehow, Broch hasn't won in ten, year, uh, 10 years. It must be. Yeah, that would explain it. People might ask. I'm just saying because they'll, they'll got no, those guys it, have no. a lot of titles. We had questions up until the day before the tournament. People were asking about it. We did. You know, we wrote a, a document and put it up there. I thought it was pretty clear about it. We were doing our best to explain, you know, what the rules were, and uh, I think most people understood it. They understood where it worked. How long had it been since you had the trios? The last one I remember was in Brockton, like way back in decades. Yeah, decades, not years. Yeah, it's been a while, long time. And we just decided to bring it back this year, along with some new houses well, we're going to, and other formats, and the Paul Ford Memorial, and some other stuff. You know, Jay knew uh, knew that was left. 
That was a miss there. So let's see if Joe Zagari can come back with that open frame he just had last frame here. Idle. And that's a how about a ripping oh, it fell, it fell. almost 710. And Idle just didn't make the corner. You, you, even when the guys move in, the urethane did have an effect because what urethane does, Jeff, is it drags the oil down the lane a lot more than regular resin does because it doesn't flare as much and the oil doesn't soak into the to the, uh, the the cover as much. So when you see a urethane ball come back, quite often you'll see the shiny oil on it on the rack. And then what it does is it drags the oil to the back end of the lane, makes the ball, doesn't make the ball hook as much on the back. So that's why a lot of people really hate urethane. They hate following urethane. So if you're going to a pair where somebody just bowled with urethane, you can count on less back end and uh, oftentimes not getting the ball through the pins the right way. You can't strike. So there's a lot of people that despise urethane for that reason. I'm not one of them. And, and, you know, <laughs> I... Uh, there's been some very, very high profile. It's amazing. Those uh, balls worked for a long time. That's, that's all we had. I don't, that's I don't all we had. Nobody I mean, complained you know, about it then. No, you know. <laughs> but, you know, there was so much less oil then. And, well, it used to be you could show up. In fact, I called somebody who hadn't bowled Neba in a long time. They go, so you can get a practice lane before you start bowling Neba, right? That used to be the case. You could show up before the tournament, get a practice lane. And here's a beautiful shot by R.J. Broge. So let me give him a triple. And extending the lead, right? Guess? Yeah. By the uh, do, web team here. Uh, well, actually, we got three 20, pin difference there. 17, 20. They're up 30 pins. Yeah, they're up 30, yeah. Yeah, 10 and 20, and the first guys are tied. So, yeah, 30 pin lead. And there is a messenger a for Kevin Tebow. Give him the double. And good shot there. There's Jagamoser. A soft hand on that one to try to get it to turn up. A little strike. There's Tommy Coomlin. Tommy Coomlin got the first six. I'm going to tell you, this Tommy Coomlin, so he comes in Bulls League at Auburn. And, you know, I usually have a pretty good look there. And I shoot two, I shoot two, 258, 266, and 229. Don't tell me you were balling in the singles. In the I was singles. balling him. I won a single game. I won one game against Tommy. Because he shoots 270, two something, something, and the kid just doesn't miss. And it's such a perfect game. He just really throws it beautifully. Oh my God. And there was an blowout amazing 7 10. blowout 7 10 on 3 and on f uh, three and 4, yeah. There's Stephen Major going for 3 in a row and give him the slap 10. Excuse me, 4 in a row. And extending the lead. Now the Ditto Fitzpatrick team on 5 and 6 is coming back. They've got. Two doubles and Fitzpatrick now about to go for a triple. However, the Alex Aguirre team has not stopped striking. Except for when I open my mouth. Except <laughs> for when you, yeah, the, you Ditto needs you to talk more. <laughs> so there you go. Oh no. And Fitzpatrick had a paralyzer <laughs> almost 5 7 10 with that urethane going away. And so that's a classic example, Jeff, of what you see. He, he moved in, he stayed with the urethane, it's not making the corner, and it won't go through the pins the right way. And it just fades away. Saying my microphone pins, might yeah. be too high. Want to turn me down a little bit? Turn you down a little bit. You a little too hot there, buddy? There you go. How's that? Got some very interesting European visitors here. I know I've been calling these matches for the um, bowling promotion tour with Bruno Badone and Chris Vialli is part of it, and a bunch of folks had come over from from Europe to bowl this event. Sarah Hood and Carl Buckley and a few other guys, and Paige Nelson came up from the south to, to bowl, so it was good to see some of those folks yeah. here. Tom Lathrop failing to double on three and four. What's going on in this match, Gas? Looks like... Uh, let's so let's see. Uh, the... Lane three. The I think the Kumlin team. Twenty. Kumlin teams in charge in, in control. I think of the, the three and four. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're uh, they gotta be up at least forty or fifty. There's R.J. Broge. 
Up on lane eight, trying to extend to four in a row here. That's a purple he's in. He's hitting it hard, goes a little high for a six pin. And this is match is tightening up. Ben Hees, can he get back on the strike train and triple here? Kevin's failing it. And Kevin just commanding double there. And how are we doing down here in the Calca match? Dennis Bissonette down there. It's on 11 and 12. And right now the Bisonet team uh, in control of that match. Dennis Bisonet pacing to 230 right now. And he gets the triple. And they catch up 20 pins that frame gas, right? Yeah. Well, 10 if uh, well, yeah, depending on if, what, uh, what Webb can strike mm -hmm. here. Looks like a Wolverine for Webb. Look at the new and Stephen Major takes a five bagger. And meanwhile, Here's Fitzpatrick, and great shot by Webb. So how are we doing here, Gas? Let's add it again. Thirty. Let's see. Oh, he's trying it, and uh, Chris Forey shooing Van Hees away from our camera. So thank you. So even though he's not on the on the mic, he's doing his job in the live stream team. So directing traffic. There you go. So, Jeff, what's the next big event coming up? We've got the Masters. March Madness. We got oh, March Madness, March of course. Madness. Yeah, here we go. With the conference tournament, March yeah. Madness. Uh, we'll be in Vegas for March 15th through the 31st. Mm -hmm. uh, hoping for some baseball and then the Masters. Well, yes. there's a uh, lockout, right? And that was going to be, that's got to get resolved by, or it had to be resolved this Supposed week. Supposed to be by, by Monday. Yeah, it's by yeah. Monday. Oh, they start canceling games. Yeah. Yep. Stone 8 by Alex. Alex Stone 8 pin. Yep. And a hell of a match there on. And what do we got here? They're seven, tied. Eight. They're tied. And that's 30. They're tied in the second. And 2050. 2050. So this match is within 10 pins, gas on 7 and 8. Because the Strike FX guys have come back three, and uh, three, have doubled. And each guy yeah. is within a yep. few pins of his guy. Yep. So, you know, RJ Broge is up by six on Hagemoser, who just doubled, but Hagemoser could. Oh, Brandon Robinson here. just rolled a three pin. I don't know if that matters or not. And RJ Broge, big shot, but it wasn't for a double. Right. Actually, Chris Forey pointing out that we can see the totals here on the score sheet. It, it uh, cycles through and it will tell us, it will add the score for us and tell us where we're at. And Hagemoser needs it. Flat seven for Hagemoser. So he's going to stay seven down to his guy. The first guy is up. Three, that's four pin difference. And there's a one pin difference between Webb and John Van Hees. So we are talking about a uh, just a four pin difference in this match on seven and eight, Jeff. And here's Steven. All right, flush. Six in a row for Steven Major. Has been on fire in everything he's been bowling lately. Mike Colby with the four, six, seven. We just about put a fork in that team, my friend, for a five and six. 
because the strike effects guys, Alex's team is not missing. I am going to take Alex. I can't. I can't bet against <laughs> Alex. <laughs> I don't know what you guys like. What were you, just, thinking, you know, what thinking about? What were we thinking? So you know. So Chris Forey is telling us that the team of Monroy Bissonette. And who's the third down there? Peter Fox. Peter Fox uh, have won. They're up by 60. So they have defeated the Elsus, Kalka, and oh. Oh. There's a. We were. I was looking at something else. Who did you see that? What happened, Jeff? What happened? I couldn't see it. What happened? Oh, did he? Oh, there you go. Okay. Messengers for Webb. And here's Van He's going straight right. Rips oh. the rack. Will not carry the 10 pin. That's going to put Webb up on his man by 12. And that's going to be almost basically the difference in the match. So Alex Aguiar taking a victory lap. They will be in. The Chris Monroy team in. We have two of our semi-finalist teams. Well, Jeff, I want to thank you again for the sponsorship for East Coast Sports Investors. You guys are the best. I got my shirt on. And Always a pleasure. Get that. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Um, look forward to it every year. Yep. Been good stuff. How many years you've been sponsoring now? This is our third year. Third year, that's yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. And you guys are based in the... Cape Cod. Cape, oh, Cape Cod. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That's a nice place to work out of. Yeah, it is. There you go. Uh, in the summertime, it's very good. Congested. Tourists everywhere. Sure. But yeah. um, we got the beaches, so we're happy there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't go wrong. So here's Alex. Just taking a victory lap on basically that match. Gary, important shot here. And give Pretty it good. A big Locked shot in. where his opponent did not strike. And that makes up for the 10 pin advantage that Webb took over Van Hees to bring that match back within 10 pins. And Jay Johnson came up light on that right lane. Saw a lot of cliffing on that right lane. We bowled on that lane and guys would get it in a little bit and it would not recover and they'd get it out and it would hook early so you saw a lot of over under on that reaction and uh, so is it going to be Fox against Alex yes okay and they'll be on 7 and 8 7 and 8 okay so the Fox team and the Alex Aguiar team will be on 7 and 8 we're still determining our teams that will be on 5 and 6 Hager Moser pulled that one really badly, and he knew it. It's going to be three pins of pretty important count, as it turns out, because this match is within a mark. And Broge, huge shot here for R.J. Broge on lane eight. And... So Chris Forey coming in with the fact of the day, the defending champions of this event is in fact the web team. So, so that's why they're bowling. So that's why they're bowling together. Got we it. were trying to figure it out. We were like, okay. So they got an exception, and that's how they're bowling together. I didn't Meanwhile, want to. RJ Broge does leave a ten pin, does not double, and so cannot expand the lead substantially for these guys. This is going right down to the tenth frame. This Van he's match, and no problem to spare for. I was kind of sure that Broge had won within the last 10 years, but I didn't want <laughs> to be well, the one open so inquiry. That's what I was thinking. So I was like, you know, didn't want to get anybody in trouble, but at the same time, it did 
peek a question. So it's kind of interesting. So now let's see what we can do on this match. And it's looking like We've got a pretty good crowd here watching this. Is cool. Yeah, no question about it. It's great turnout. Forty-nine teams is amazing. And Van Hees knew he missed when he let it go. That hit the cliff and did not make the corner. And now he's got 245 maximum. And Alex Hoham dead flush. Ten back. And here's the Tommy Kumlin team enjoying a healthy lead in their match. So it looks like Tommy Kumlin and company are going to make it. Here's Webb with that Wolverine boom. Webb away from bowling for quite a while during the COVID pandemic, but has made his move back. And as strong as ever is Webb. Our next event, March 19th and 20th, Bullwinkle's Pro Shop. Open singles at Hall of Fame at Silver Lanes. That will be a, I believe, a challenge pattern. Let me look that up here. Challenge medium. So we are going with different styles of pattern. We're not exactly announcing the pattern until the week before the event, but we will say challenge, sport, or challenge, uh, sport, or what we call standard, which is really a recreational. So, and then short, medium, or long. Distance. And then short, medium, or long. So yeah. So. All right. So healthy lead for the Kumlin team. Oh, Tommy just missed. And Colby and company going through the motions. Unfortunately, they will call it a day in the with a top eight finish. One and six ratio to make the finals here. You had to, you had to bowl. So these teams are definitely the cream of the crop. Okay, into the tenth frame we go, Mr. Gas. That match and on three and four is not over yet. Uh, it's it's pretty close to over. Eh, it's close, uh, but not quite yet. Yeah. If I like uh, Naku opened in the eighth. That's probably why you're saying that. And then Kumlin just missed a 10 pin. Yeah, and the other team has all hits so up. So, I mean, if they, you right, can make right. up a lot of pins in the 10th frame if you all strike out and the other That's team true. doesn't. Exactly right. Now, Ku went flush in the 9th, so he set up for the 10th. And now it will be Jay Johnson. Big shot in the 10th. 248 possible. Meanwhile, Joe Zakari has taken he better get a... He better get a couple here because the other guys are on spares on his team. So that's right. He's the uh, Zakari's our only chance to he gain needs, gain some He needs wood a double here. here. They're in trouble. That's right. Zakari two two fifty six possible. It's a very pretty good shot and rips the rack for a. Lower 710 that wasn't. Gets the messenger out to take out the 7, but does leave the 10 pin for a max 235. Now Jay Johnson can double here and actually beat his man. Then you have the middle guy up 10 on the web team. And big shot there by Jay Johnson. And then you have Webb up by 20. So you've I think actually Webb got Bros just you're, actually, over. you're actually looking at a 30 pin lead now. I by think Webb. if they just mark it's over. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then over on three and four, the match I was just talking about, both guys, both anchor bowlers doubled. So it is a 33 pin lead going into the 10th. Which, right. and again, with all guys on hits, that can disappear fast. It can change. So that match is not over yet. Now you can actually see this match to the right of your screen. Left. Here's Tommy. That's what I meant. Left. <laughs> I know. Lefties think backwards. I get I do. It. I know. Tommy Cumlin, big hit there. So. Oh, he got that one left and went Brooklyn, but give him two. Yeah, so they're up 37. 
Yeah. 30 Even if there. the other guys yeah. both double, they can only make up 20. I mean, yeah, Webb and Bros need like one mark between them. So it will be Webb taking out the other Strike FX team. So the Alex Aguiar Strike FX team will be around. Coco just doubled in, on three and four to, to get that 10 closer. Yep. And now so Kuhlman, the 30 is Kuhlman now has a chance to match. The, th the 30 is now 20. Yeah. So three and four turning out to be the closest match. Yeah, quite the uh, quite the crowd here, Gas. Pretty cool. Oh my God! And Some of us said they need one mark. Broge. Yeah, blowout seven ten. RJ Bros just goes blowout seven ten. You know he's throwing that purple. Doesn't quite make the corner. He's going to go two oh six, so he doesn't get lucky. And now what happened with Kumlin? He went through the beak, so could right. not double. If so Coco, Coco doubles here. This is going to be a real close match. Yeah. It's going to be within 10, I think, if Coco gets this one. And got it. bang, he He's gets got it. it, slaps the 7. And so, oh, that's a huge shot there for Hagamo. Kept there. it mathematically alive anyway. That's right. So I Broge think. Broge is going to open, so we're going to have a 3-pin lead going in. Broge is going to shoot 2-0. Hagamoser will beat him no matter what. I still think they need Webb to open. Vinny's a double. It's the only thing that can happen, I, I believe. 80, yeah, 50-80. Webb is, Webb is at the 259 pace. And, well, Van Hees can go 245. So if Webb just doesn't strike, I think Hagamoser can strike here to get them within range. Coco goes nine out and will not happen. It's just seven out. Doesn't matter the count. 209. So I think you're right, Gas. I think they need an open by Will Bill Webb here right now at this point. Big strike for Danny Cool on three and four. Oh, huge shot for that Danny. That was for double, yep. He needed that. So they were up. They were only up 13 only up th with two yeah. bowlers to go. Right. And that gave them another 10. So they're 23 up now with yep. two to go. So Hagamoser beats his guy by two. But the first guy loses by three. So one pin match going into the contest between Bill Webb and Van Hees. And Bill Webb with the dominant lead. Oh. Bill Webb with the 24 pin lead. So don't think, unless Webb opens, uh, Van Hees can catch him. And oh my God! No way! How about a, how about a rip in seven ten? No for way! Bill Webb on lane seven. That's my curse, there, buddy. What did I just say? So now let's give him thirty six. Let's give him forty five. And so now let's give Van Hees. Yeah, if he gets one, I think forty five of them. So Webb needs it's one. It's going to be. Yeah, I think Webb just gets one, and then that's game over. I think because of the count. Yeah. And he doesn't strike anyway, so that's the game. Bill Webb survives and moves on. And meanwhile, Ku did double. And so did Peroni. So and now so that match Peroni. is still a 13-pin so match. match. Yep. So one, one, one mark match there. Webb looking for the spare. Doesn't get it. It's okay, though. Wow. That's enough. Can you so imagine 689. that? 689. 689 for that team. And they're the defending champs. They are moving on to the next round. They will not face Alex. They will face the winner of the Kumlin match, Danny Ku match. Now, a reminder, I will tell you right now, the best bowler in this field is a non-champion is Danny Ku. Guess. Right? Um, what did you say? Um, That's probably a good question. Kevin. Actually. KT. Kevin. Kevin T. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. I mean, the lot of, lot of, they're both good. I mean, yeah. So, 54, 68. So, we got a 14 pin lead here, buddy, for uh, for Lathrop going in. So, it's. No, 
Now Lathrop, if he can if he can strike here, look to the left of your screen on lane four. If Lathrop strikes here, uh, the game's over. And the last trio was, was in 2007, I'm told. So it was multi-decades. And here's Todd Lathrop. Big shot. Kick the 10. That's going to be enough for that team. Are you sure you want to say on. that this time? <laughs> well, uh, that's right. I, mean, I, wanna, I just want to test to see if it still works. I mean, as soon as I let's said, oh, go, oh, let's see him go four through the I just said explosion. Web need one mark between them. Right, yeah. And he goes 7-10 in the pocket. Well, uh, I mean, true. so, I mean, so he could get five. I mean, count. if he gets yeah. five, it's not over. He goes four through the middle. It could be di uh, a different ball game. So, still fourteen or thirteen. Sorry, right? Gas. I mean, 13. if he went seven two and the other guy struck out, they could win. So it's not like That's over true. over. It's true. But if he gets nine in this shot, it's over. It's his to win. If he gets nine in this shot, it's over. Right. This is Todd Lathrop we're talking about. And yeah, that's another over. dead flush shot. He's got it, so good shot there. Thank you. And so, sorry for the camera, guys. It got knocked. And uh, we'll be we'll be signing off here in just a second. And then we'll uh, we'll have to re... Somebody knocked our camera, but we'll be signing off here in a second. We'll realign it. So, anyway, great bowling, guys, to the guys who made it and uh, got knocked out of some very close matches. We'll be coming back. Watch Alex Aguiar see if he can run the field against the defending champions. It's good to be Alex in this building, isn't it? It, it is very he good shot, to be Alex. By the way, he shot 2-0. Shot 2-0, and his team won by 190. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's right. For once, he didn't much have to do with them. <laughs> but it still happened. And there's the week 10 that Alex is, that uh, Lathrop's glad he didn't leave before. And... Uh, This is uh, Kornog, his last shot. He'll go 240s. So, unfortunately, that's going to be a 7-14 uh, a performance by the Kornog team. Not enough against Ku, who win with 7-27. Wow. Yes, Jeff, thanks so much. Good to see you, my friend. Take care. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, always always okay. a pleasure. And, guys, we'll be right back for the semifinals. Take care, everybody. Be right back.